good evening. This is Chris Bame, and this is a demo of my version of the reverse S hook. This was actually shown to me by Don Lang, I don't know, about uh, 12 years ago. Don Lang has passed away a couple of years back, but this is one of the things that he taught me uh, when I first got with the Cloudbusters from Detroit, where we fly in Flint, Michigan. Right? The reverse S hook. Uh, is actually fairly simple to make once you uh, kind of get used to it at least the way Don showed me All right. uh, that is what I will try to convey to you is just how simple it is to make the reverse S hook start off with a piece of wire um, I'm going to use a peck button on the particular model that I'm working on which is a um, uh, flying aces moth um, the idea of how to bend the reverse S hook, at least the way Don Lang showed me, was to start off with a piece of music wire. This is, happens to be .047 uh, size wire, which fits the um, peck button quite well. Simply catch it with a pair of needle nose pliers a little ways from the end of the wire. Now. As far as exactly what length from the end of the wire, that's up to you to decide when you make your hooks. All right. I like starting with a good inch sticking out as shown here because it's easier to bend it. All right. Now that I've got it pinched in the end of the needle nose pliers, it's a simple matter to rotate the pliers using my fingers to bend the wire around both ways. All right. Both ends. And with the Don Lang version, I actually go quite a bit farther than what a lot of people do with the reverse S hook. It actually turns into an S rather than a Z. If you notice, I got it around into the reverse S shape. If I'm wanting to make this for a smaller model, I'll actually take my pliers here and squeeze this down a little bit tighter. All right. You can go quite snug on this. I like closing up these gaps right at this point quite tight so that the rubber cannot come off of the prop shaft at the end of the flight as this is now. So we're all tight that is right at this point. Right. Do the same on the other part of it. Close it down. Got them pretty close. They don't have to be exact. There's one part that needs to be exact on this and that'll come after a couple more bends. Now that I've got the uh, reverse S hook shape, I've got to make three other bends. Now I'm going to take, grab a hold here with my pliers, and bend this end down. Notice the shape that I've been in at that point. I like leaving this one a little bit long at the end here. If you can look at some of mine, you can see some are a little on the long side. All right. Some are actually a little bit shorter. All right. I can make that any length that I want, All right. especially after this first critical bend here. I get it bent, and then I use my Dremel tool to cut it off to the length that I want it to be. I like using Dremel, or the Dremel tool at this point rather than uh, just cutting it off with the pliers because the rubber will actually be going over this part and I don't want any sharp burrs on this. I'll try to do this in front of the camera so you can see it as I cut this off. Now at that point, that does have a little edge on this that the rubber motor could snag on and mess up my rubber motor. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to take and try to polish this end a little bit. Round off the edge. You 
think you got it rounded off enough, put your thumb on the end of that. If you feel any sharp edges, you don't have it rounded off enough because that will snag the rubber someday. And on a fully wound up motor, that's a bad thing. Right. Next step is catch these, catch this in the pliers again. All right. Fold the long end of my wire over and down. And this time I'm actually going to go past 90 degrees. All right. Notice the shape that it's in now. Well past 90 degrees. The idea at this is I want to take and have this angle going across here to cross over a center line from the center of my S straight through. Catch here. Bend this now perpendicular to the S. All right. If you look at it now, you'll see that it's not perpendicular. The S is kind of wobbling at this point. So now it's kind of just sight and twist and adjust until I get it to where it is perpendicular. I want that S to be running perpendicular to my wire here. All right. Notice how I, that is bent down here more than 90 degrees, or actually to a less than 90 degree angle, and then bent back to come out straight to where this wire is at a 90 degree angle to my S. A major point to look at, and what I like to do is to slide this onto a peck button, or some other brass tubing or something the right size for the wire look directly at the end of it all right and rotate what you're looking for here is you want your s you'll see a little part where it stars in the center of it all right this is very very close to what you want it to be I'm going to take and get this out of alignment so you can see what you don't want. That is not the shape that you want. There we go. Now, if we spin this really fast, if I line it up with the camera as though you're looking straight down it, spin it, you can see where everything rotates around the center point of that S. You want that to be in the center. All right. Once you've got that, the rubber motor will automatically track to the center of that S. All right. No matter how many turns you got on it and how loose your motor is, once it's wound down, it will be there. And again, I've got it back to where the um, S is perpendicular to the main part of the shaft. All right. That's it for bending a simple actual reverse S hook not an S hook at least that is the way Don Lane taught me to do it and I've adjusted over the years. Right.